Today, I welcome you specially to times of refreshing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We begin this broadcast in your name. Honor us with your presence. Bless every hearer and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today, I want to share with you a very, very special topic that are captioned, stand out, not blend in. Stand out, not blend in. In today's world, morals continue to decline and uncovering nakedness in one way or another has become a fashion statement and a trend. Surprisingly, hardly will you see the media portray beauty without a form of nakedness. Culture and society has magnified nakedness and diminished modesty by parading nakedness as the new norm. Especially for singles, male and female, this is very, very important. And sadly, the church is not spared in this menace as clothes not befitting to be worn outside one's bedroom is being seen worn to church services. This ought not to be. Listen, you are meant to stand out and not to blend in. Clothing is a language, a non-verbal form of communication. Clothing and appearance sends a message. It is often used to signify age, gender, political views, and even economic status. So, it is an important form of expression, giving meaning to ethnicity, social status, personal identity, style, and even fashion. What is the purpose of clothing? It's a very important question we must ask. The primary purpose of clothing is to cover man's nakedness. How do I mean? In scriptures, we find out when Adam and Eve realized that they were naked, one of the first things that God did was to cover them up. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 21. God made clothes from animal skin for their warmth and covering. Nakedness in the Bible is usually associated with shame, fear, guilt, even vulnerability, among several others. You must understand that you can be clothed and still be naked if it doesn't cover vital areas like your breast, loins, genitals, etc. See, naked people have little or no influence in the society. When I was growing up, it is easier to tell a Christian, even by their dressing, as there were particular clothes back then that were tagged SU. But these days, even children's clothing is sexualized, and the media continually encourages nakedness as being bold, brave, and liberating. Caution and caution and caution, especially to singles. This is very important. Don't wear sexually suggestive dresses. You may be in for the greatest surprise of your life. Indecent dressing may lead to sexual harassment, unwanted pregnancy, even prostitution, ritual killings, among several others. Those who dress provocatively are prone to disrespect and even rape. Listen, you are more beautiful and presentable when private areas of your body are well covered. Dressing well shows that you have self-respect. Truth is, your dressing has a lot more to do with the condition of your heart than with the specifics of your wardrobe. The way you dress 
represents the state of your mind. How do I mean? In the Bible, in Mark 5.15, the man of gathering that was mad after he was delivered of the spirit that possessed him was clothed and in his right mind. And we have several examples in the Bible like that. In scriptures, certain types of clothes were worn as an expression of the inner emotional state of the wearer. For instance, we have festive garments, such as for a wedding, which connoted joy. Matthew 22, 11 talks about wedding garment. Two, prison garment. Jeremiah 52, 33 talks about that. Three, leper's garment. Leviticus 13, 59 talks about leprosy in a garment. Also, clothes of mourning. Genesis 38, 14 talks about widow's garment. Fifth, harlot attire. Proverbs 7, 10 talks about the attire of an harlot. Also, we have the sackcloth symbolizing repentance or sorrow. Genesis 37, 34 talks about that. These are very important information in scriptures. Also, those in an extreme state of grief, fear, or anger would tear their clothes. Isaiah 37, 1 talks about renting of clothes. Also, we have royal apparel. Esther 5, 1. She put on her royal apparel. And then the list goes on and on. So, your dressing reflects your self-worth, your value, your taste, etc. As a gentleman, would you sag your trousers if you were to represent your country at a United Nations General Assembly? Of course, no. You can't see royalties, presidents of nations, CEOs of companies, and true ministers of the gospel dress inappropriately. Wearing torn trousers, torn shirt, trousers in their buttock, skimpy, transparent outfits, and on and on. Please understand, highly placed individuals dress to depict their status. Remember, as it is popularly said, the way you dress is the way you will it be addressed? So the way you present yourself to the world is how they will take you. Do you dress to kill or to please? The choice is yours. Modesty in dressing may seem outdated, but really it is not. Haven't you noticed that job interviews, promotion exercise, proposal defense, etc. usually consider well-dressed individuals first? Many people have denied themselves privilege of access where it mattered just by careless appearance. As a Christian, your dressing should glorify God and make you stand out. The way you dress convey your spiritual, social, and even ethical priorities. But what makes your dressing honorable, especially as a Christian? One is modesty. The Bible talks about adorning ourselves in modest apparel, 1 Timothy 2, 9. What does it mean to be modest? It simply means being orderly and well arranged and organized. Remember, people see you before they hear you out. Sadly, some have lost up to 95% of their audience by careless appearance. You must begin to think global, and that will influence your dressing. Whether you are single or married, you should dress with a sense of decency, respect, sound mind, good judgment, and moderation. When you choose to be modest in dressing, you have chosen to be respected. Someone said, and I believe this is very true, modesty 
is not only an ornament, but also a guard to virtue. Your dressing should reflect your faith, your values, and your beliefs. Therefore, dear listener, don't join the bandwagon of if you can't beat them, join them. No, you are too much for that. You are meant to shine the light even in this dark world. Your dressing does not have to reveal sensitive parts of your body, else it's an abuse. You don't have to provoke jealousy or be a stumbling block for another person's downfall. God forbid. There are many decent clothes that still portrays you as beautiful if you opt out for them. It is said that modesty is the highest elegance. So you can be modest and stylish. The key is know your color combination, your body type, and how to dress according to the occasion. Be comfortable and confident in what you wear. Your dressing reveals who you are, what you are up to, and that's the feedback you get from people. Second, represent your faith. This is very crucial. 1 Corinthians 10, 31b says, Whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Just as every profession has their mode of dressing, Believers also have their mode of dressing. You can't claim to be serving God and still dress like an unbeliever. When you get born again, old things should be left behind, including old ways of dressing. Your dress sense should bring glory to God and not shame. You are an ambassador of Christ. Show a positive example. Don't let the world begin to question whose side you are on by your dressing. The early believers were first called Christians because they behaved like Christ, and this includes their dressing and conduct. Does your dressing glorify God or amplify the devil? You know better. Your dress sense is an expression of your nature. My point here is, if you have the nature of God, then you should dress to reflect this. Singles, whether you are male or female, you are wonderfully and fearfully made. You were made in the image and likeness of God, and you should carry this position with dignity. You are an ambassador for Christ. You should dress to win souls and not weaken them. There are certain clothes you will wear, definitely you know, that nobody will want to listen to you even when you preach the gospel to them. So winning is broad. It doesn't even only entail preaching alone, but your courage, your dressing. It should draw multitudes to God. Your body is also the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you should dress with this in mind. Ask yourself, are you dressing to kill or to give life? Be a positive example to others in your clothing. And thirdly, be appropriate. 1 Corinthians 14.40, the Bible is very clear about this. Let all things be done decently and in order. There is a mode of dressing for every occasion. You need to understand this. Your dressing is the first impression you make on the minds of people. And of course, it is often said, first impression can never be erased. When you dress appropriately, you earn the respect of others. And the truth is, your dress sense is a way to say who you are without having to speak. For instance, in the Bible, we are told about Rebecca. She covered herself with a veil when she met Isaac, Genesis 24, 65. That showed self-respect. How about Joseph? He had to change his clothes before he met Pharaoh and to shave his beard when he was brought out of the dungeon, 
before he could ascend the throne. Genesis 41, 14. So young people, especially today, why don't you shave yourself clean in a smart manner? You don't have to carry bushy hair and bushy bear because you cannot ascend the throne that way. How about Esther in the Bible? She dressed in the royal apparel when she appeared before the king, Esther 5, 1. So my point is, don't dress carelessly to any occasion. My husband usually shares the story of how he realized from scripture at a very young age that he was royalty. So before leaving the house, he would check and ask himself if a royalty would dress that way. And of course, I must tell you with every sense of responsibility, one of the things also that attracted me to my husband before we got married was his sense of courage and dressing. Not too many clothes, yes, but always neat, simple, properly washed and ironed. This makes it easy to attract your kind. Someone has said, you can get anything you want in life if you dress for it. All our children growing up before they got married also understand this secret. They also carry themselves that way, the male, the female. Simple, neat, straightforward. And many, many others in the body of Christ today. Therefore, even in choosing a spouse, you must understand the way you dress determines who you will attract. Of course, no serious Christian will be attracted to anyone indecently dressed. You are believing God for his partner in marriage? Check your dress sense and the way you present yourself. Is it an obstruction or will it attract any serious Christian to you? You must be ready to take responsibility for your life. Truth is, when you dress shabbily, people will remember the dress. But when you dress impeccably, people will remember you. The choice is yours. Don't follow the crowd when you can be a peace setter. Learn to stand out rather than blend in. Your packaging will always affect your product. As I close, I want you to remember, no matter how fashionable you desire to be, don't make fashion own you. Rather, define your style and what you want to express by the way you dress. May the Lord give you understanding. Remember, dressing well is a form of good manners. Your dress style depicts the state of your heart. If, therefore, your heart is in tune with God, your dressing will be in line with what he represents. Therefore, whether you are single or married, male or female, I pray for you today. Receive grace to align yourself with God and his word and to be ready to stand out rather than blend in. You will make it in Jesus' name. Now, as I close, are you born again? Because this is a great question you have to answer. No matter how well dressed you are, if you are not saved, you are not safe. Salvation is the way of escape. Therefore, today, you can be born again. Bow your heads and pray this prayer with me right now. Say after me, O oh God, today I come to you. Jesus, save me. Wash my sins. Make me your child. From today, I am born again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Congratulations. If you just said that salvation prayer, you are now born again. I congratulate you. Make sure you log on to the website showing 
on the screen to fill the salvation form. And I also have a free gift for you about salvation. Just download that material. You can also send in your testimonies through this medium and connect through the social media handles at the bottom of your screen. And always remember, God is too faithful to fail. See you next time. Bye.